Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to the video tutorial. This is a long awaited follow up. It is way overdue for the previous video, which was um, real estate accounting using products and services for rehab management. So if you haven't watched that one, I would recommend you do that. Um, but this one's going to touch on the next piece of this, which um, at year end, when you're done uh, renovating all your properties and you need to tell your accountant where you spent money and you need to make the proper journal entries so that you are deducting the right things, you're capitalizing the right things. So I'm going to show you how to do those journal entries. Um, so again, if you haven't watched the, the previous video, watch that now, part one. We're going to pick up right where that one left off, where we're looking at my screen here, I have my transaction report of some of the sample um, work I've done on, on the house, right? So it, as a reminder, what I was doing is I was tagging these construction costs to a product or service that was then hitting my transaction report in a way that I could uh, filter and, um, and see where I'm spending money. One other thing, keep in mind, you'll know that we're doing all of this for 123 Main Street, right? That class. Of course, if you wanted to see this by uh, property, we can do that as well. Uh, well, we can we can certainly filter that. Okay, so you can customize here. Go to filter and go to class and indicate which properties you want to see. Right. All right okay. So um, obviously we only have one property now, so it's pretty easy. So let's see what's going on here from a reporting standpoint at the end of the year. This is all 2018 stuff. So I go to my reports and I go to my standard profit and loss for last year, uh, whoops, okay, last year. All right, if I run that report, you see that I have a negative, you know, net income of negative 74.50. Of course, your business is gonna have a lot more going on. And in the uh, future, when we're gonna be doing, you know, more trainings, we're gonna really like build up the business. So we, we're gonna have an actual profit and loss and rental income and all that stuff. So you're gonna see all that, but um, for, uh, demonstrating here, we have a negative net income of seventy four fifty. All right, and that's not necessarily true because all the work we were doing on the property really added to the value of it. It wasn't necessarily an expense, but we're going to track it like this throughout the year. And then what we do at the end of the year is that we, with help from our CPA, is we make journal entries so that we can put this in the right spot. Now, when I say put this in the right spot, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the balance sheet. So let's go back to our reports list. If I were to pull my balance sheet as of last year. By the way, you'll notice everything is accrual for accounting and taxes. You're gonna to have to do cash. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing, but just note that. All right, so if I were to look at my balance sheet as of, oops, as of the end of last year, all right, you can see that my property is worth 125,000. And um, I have 71,000 in my checking account and I have a mortgage worth this much. Now my land went somewhere, so I have to fix that. I think I have some land that needs to be in there as well, but we'll ignore the land for now, don't worry about it. And then my net income is negative 7450. That's not necessarily accurate, okay? Um, my building should be worth more because I spent on it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, we have to add some accounts to our chart of accounts. You can do this in a few ways. You can do this during the journal entry or you can do it ahead of time. I'm going to do it ahead of time for you. So I'm going to go to plus uh, and we're going to go to, um, where do I want to go for this? Actually, no, I'm going to go settings and I'm going to go to chart of accounts and I'm going to add a new chart, uh, a new account. Let me just edit this, get my land back. No, I can't. Okay, no worries. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so I'm going to add, so I have 123 Main Street building, I have 123 Main Street land, and I have building basis, building depreciation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add an asset account for 123 Main Street capital improvements. Okay, so new, what is it? It's a fixed asset. Detail type is, um, you know, we can do buildings again. Just look in here. It'll go buildings, and then we're gonna do one, two, three, Main Street. 
capital improvements. It's a sub account of 123 Main Street. You could make it a sub account of 123 Main Street building. You don't really need to. I am going to track depreciation of this and your accountant is going to help you do that, but um, you won't track depreciation in this year, but next year when it comes around, you're going to log a journal entry for depreciation. My original cost, I'm going to leave that blank for now. I'm going to go click save and close. Now when you do that, it's going to add the account to your chart of accounts and it's going to add the account for depreciation as well. Now in the last video, uh, I don't know if I showed you it or not, but I like to change the names of these so that they fall in the right place. So I'm going to change depreciation. I'm going to go here to edit and I'm going to make sure this says 123 Main Street Cap X depreciation. It's a sub account still. That works. Okay. And now I'm going to do uh, 123 Main Street CapEx basis. All right. Save and close. Now those are ready for me to use. They're zero right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a journal entry to move money or move, you know, an amount from what I spent this year as an expense for my books to the basis of this property at year end 2018. All right, so let's go back to the balance sheet and uh, see how we can do this. Let's go balance sheet and I'm just gonna do all time because I think that'll give me my building. Yeah, the land looks like it's got an opening trial balance of 111. So that we can fix by just changing the date. So what you're gonna be doing it as you're preparing for um, taxes, you're gonna be pulling your balance sheet as of last year uh, as cash. And that's what you're gonna be giving to your accountant. If you give it to them like this, it's not correct. And they're gonna tell you that that's not correct. You're gonna capitalize at least some of this, maybe all. Now, how much do you capitalize? That is a discussion for you to have with your CPA. Okay, so we look into these expenses. These are um, all things that some might be capitalized, some might not be. That's why using categories is helpful that you can tell your accountant, okay, look, I spent seven grand on the rough electric. That's certainly capitalized. I spent 5,000 on appliances. 5,000 on appliances, appliances have a different depreciation schedule. We might have to treat them differently. For now, I'm going to assume that all the CapEx is the same. If it wasn't, what you would do is sub accounts within that CapEx for each depreciation schedule. That's getting kind of complicated, but that's a discussion that you and your accountant would have. All right, so let's make the journal entry to move all of this to where it should go in the balance sheet. Okay, so we're gonna do a, a journal entry and this journal entry should be dated the last day of the year. That's how I do it anyways. 12, 20, I'm sorry, 12, 31, 2018. All right, so the first account that we're going to work on is the direct construction costs, okay? So what we're gonna do with the direct construction costs, we're gonna credit it, the 74,500. And you know what I'm gonna do real quick is just remind myself of this amount. 74.50 is what it was, okay. All right, so apologize for that. Seventy four fifty. okay, and I'm just gonna say year end capitalization, one, two, three, Main Street. Now you're gonna do this for each property, remember, right? And then here I'm gonna go to my one, two, three, Main Street, CapEx basis, I'm gonna debit it. Save and close. All right, and look what we've done there. Okay, so we've added that 7450 to our CapEx. So now the total value, if I were to, you know, pop this down, 123 Main Street is now worth all of that, right? So if I, we're to look at my buildings worth 125, my cap X is worth 7450, my land's worth 50, my total value of 123 Main Street is 182,450. All right, and that's how it should look on your balance sheet. My net income is now zero. I didn't do anything this year from a uh, profit and loss standpoint, that is, okay? 
So um, that is the journal entry that makes your books match your taxes, okay? Um, and now if I pop these open, what we're gonna do next year, right, in 2019, we're gonna depreciate each of those. Now we're not gonna depreciate any of it this year because I spent it all this year, right? But uh, actually, um, just, you know, that's not necessarily true. Maybe you could, like if you spent this money early in 2018, which I actually did, your accountant might ask for those dates. You might log some depreciation this year. So don't quote me on that. Again, a discussion for your CPA as far as the timing is concerned. But to keep things simple, the first year you spend the money, you don't depreciate it. The following years you do depreciate it on some sort of schedule. Okay, um, so that's how you do it. Now let's just really quickly look at my profit and loss then for last year. In theory, it should be nothing, right? We didn't do anything uh, because uh, we we made that journal entry. And there you go, it's gone, right? And if I were to click into direct construction costs, you can see here's my spending, 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 journal entry to get rid of it, all right? And I do it this way and my accountant loves it. Um, what it does, it keeps the books in line because you know his balance sheet matches mine, his depreciation schedule matches mine, and there's a lot less fighting over where things should go. Um, I have him help me as far as what should be depreciated on what schedule and what dates I should use, and I just kind of copy his entries into mine, and it works out nicely. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and thanks for your patience um, on you know me getting it up here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about accounting codes and where to get them from. In fact, what I'm going to do is link from this video to sample accounting codes for the products and services. Remember, we talked about in the last video your lists of, of products and services, and those are your categories that you're going to attract spending in. What I'm going to give you is a list, a giant list of accounting codes that um, I got from the National Association of Home Builders, okay? And uh, what that is, if I were to look at the, the pivot table here, is there a series of categories and subcategories of different things that you could spend money on. And what you can do with this list is you can import it into QuickBooks, okay? And that way you don't have to spend a lot of time going crazy adding those. Now, one thing I'll recommend is this is a lot. Um, this is a lot of accounting codes and it might be too much, it might be too detailed for you. so. Um, take a look at it first and maybe delete some that you're not going to use or add some that you think would be useful. But ultimately, this is a good starting point for you. So um, I'll put a link to that. It's going to be uh, an Excel download um, and uh, you can grab it, use it if you like. If not, that's okay too. But thanks a lot for your patience. Thanks for watching. And um, certainly what I really would like from you is to ask me questions in the comments of anything that you don't understand or you'd like to see in the next one because that's that's all how we're going to be doing these videos from now on is just uh, answering questions making sure that you guys are getting the exact info that you need as soon as possible all right thanks so much i'll see you guys next time